Hi everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Before we get into this video, I just want to let you know that Noroth is a free-to-play MMORPG that is completely accessible on literally any device that has a browser. So if you have a phone or anything like that that has an actual internet search engine, just go there, go to the link down below, and get started now. This video is going to be a little bit different because I am playing it, and I'm also going to be interviewing the developer last minute, so I hope you enjoy. Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Stellar Crew, and welcome to Noroth. So this game and video are both brought to you by the creators of Noroth, Twin Eagle. So the last time we played this was almost a year ago, I think. I honestly think it was about a year ago, it's crazy to think about, but this is like an independent uh, tile-based RPG-based game. And from my understanding, he's went through, made a lot of changes, so we're gonna jump into it, play it for a little bit, and see how much it's changed. I don't think I claimed this last time. I guess not. So we're gonna go ahead and take everything. I'm gonna have to remember my controls and stuff. So sell a resource to vendor. Looks like, we, ooh, we got like a to-do list, okay. So if I click go, I'm not sure. If, oh wait, did we have this map last time? I don't recall ever seeing this map. Maybe they didn't have the map last time. I know it's a big work in progress for them. They definitely come a long way since they first started. I say they, but I'm pretty sure Twin Eagle's a solo developer, if I'm not mistaken. So are these just all places that I've been? Current location is orange and, okay, so there's actually actual like previous locations and I can teleport to them that is actually nice all right so yeah it looks like we were level four last time we played alignment one the biggest thing that I didn't care for when I first played it was the movement style I also noticed right off the bat there's actually no on-screen tile like a, an on-screen grid so if I just do this right if I if I walk down here oh that is so much smoother oh so you can move the camera like this and it looks like we actually got another player right down here let me see what was the button for the the controls here I do apologize if my lighting is fluctuating the Sun is starting to go down it is like going directly into my window into my eyes and I have some diffusion over the window to try and keep it dim but apparently that's not how it wants to work center on hero okay so there wasn't one in the movie it was just me being crazy let's see uh seems that this one is not as damaged as the others now why is that fishing scrap i'm gonna have to get i'm gonna have to completely relearn this game because i don't remember much of it at all minnows i'll definitely take all of that Let's go ahead and check out the farming field as well while we're at it i think i might have said this actually in the first video but this reminds me of an old game called fate i think it was called fate it was like a you, you put the disc in this is like an old this is a very old game okay so it looks like uh, the more you do it you just i got you i got you we're not here for that so we're here for our missions all right let's go ahead and come down here and see so we got zero coins we got different pack skins etc i don't think they had all this last time daily present claim it's free Look at all them goodies. Lots of goodies. I do apologize if I'm not being too enthusiastic. I'm trying to be enthusiastic, but as of right now recording this, it is going on 6 o'clock, which doesn't seem late at all. But my sleep schedule has been all over the place. I've been trying to adjust to it better because I'm working third shift, but I miss making videos. So even though I am tired, I definitely am going for this the best I can. So I do apologize if my performance seems a little dull. I'm not trying to. I'm very much enjoying this, and I hope that you guys are too. I'm just going to be a little monotone, I guess, today. So what, what is this? I think this is our inventory. Yeah, achievement tokens, so we got quite a bit there. Oh, you can just click on this this time. I think last time you actually had to go somewhere to do this. The exchanges. Account progress. Teleport. Uh, instantly skip spaces magically of teleporting yourself. That would be a cool thing to have. Do I have that? I don't think I have that. I would love to have that. Uh, permanently increase the stack size of all slots uh, in inventory slash by one. That would be cool. I don't know if I have those or if I don't have those. I assume that I don't have those yet. I want to look at this map again. I know I'm, I'm, I'm kind of being a little bit slow at starting all this out, but wow. The map is beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. I didn't know that all this was here. And I don't think the map was this big at all last time, if there was a map. Yeah, I think I remember the spire. Or not the spire. There was something that we start, we start, yeah, right here. Fountain of Rebirth. We started out there and we worked our way up etc how in the world do i see my daily quest again right here oh wait that's auto accept quest we don't want that oh we have a referral thing so yeah if you want to play this game it's completely free to play in your browser you can play it on tablets phones i'm going to leave this fancy link down below so that way we both get rewarded if you want to play it sound good good okay uh quest journal is q that's what i needed to figure out ah yes so bring six mucky meat yes yeah, six mucky meat to uh, Casper and it looks like I I started it but I never finished it and then same with this one bring 20 minnows to 
to the same person. Oh, no, 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 that's the town. That's the town. Okay, my bad. Okay, so let's uh, let's actually go back to the town and see if we can complete our missions there. Do I have the teleport? Do I have the money? I definitely gotta say, the movement is so much smoother, and I love it. Definitely props to you guys. Like, that. that's awesome. Achievement! I did it. I did something. I don't remember what I did. I assume cleanup just clears it out, yeah? Uh, no, we, we kind of want to keep these, I think. Awesome, awesome. All right, so recently completed, end of the start, etc. I don't remember how we see our daily quest, but that is okay. Uh, we're 40% done with the fishing one, which that makes sense. And then we're 87 of the mucky meat. I just gotta remember where that is. I absolutely love the art style. I love it so much. Look at all these players. Look, player, player, player. Oh, that's the villager, my bad. Player, player, player. That's actually the owner right there. So I think last time I played this, there was only a couple of players actually in the game. And holy cow, I love to see See that it's grown this much like that I, I love that that is awesome is this the thing we're going to right here let me look here uh, no, it has like a fence. Is that it? I think that's it right here. I just don't remember where you fight the rat. But you know what I do remember? I do remember how to fish. So we're gonna work our way over there and, you know, progress. One thing that I do want to suggest, maybe there's an option for this in the settings, which I'll check here in a second, but I would definitely love to use a scroll wheel to zoom in or zoom out while playing. I don't know how possible that is, but I would absolutely love to zoom in on the character and stuff like that. That's just me being me. You know, you guys know how I am. So we're gonna go ahead and collect some fish while we're here and hopefully get this mission finalized with the fish guy. And then while we do that, I'm going to check my controls and see if maybe there is an actual zoom option. Okay, so there doesn't look like there is one for it, but that's all right. So while we're doing this, I want to do something a little bit different in this, which isn't something that I've done in previous uh, previous videos like this, because this is like a sponsored video, right? And typically I don't get the developers too involved with the video making process. Um... I'm going to reach out to the owner of this, and I guess we're going to, like I said, we're going to do this very differently. We're going to ask him some questions. We're going to kind of do like a little interview, you know? So that way you guys aren't just hearing my side of this and my whole take on it. I, I think that having the conversation would be very beneficial, you know? And since I don't really have too much free time to explore this game on my own outside of the recording, having him in here, I think, would help us out a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and close out our chat again. I'm going to check out our fishing. So we're 80% of the way done. This was at 40, so we are almost done. That is lovely. So as I was just saying to the audience, we're doing things a little bit differently with this episode because typically whenever I'm working with developers such as yourself, yeah. I don't have too much direct contact with the developer. You know, typically it's through the messages or, you know, in-game. Yeah, like we did it before. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so in this one, I wanted to kind of mix it up a tiny bit. I guess have your thoughts and everything. I definitely, playing it, I really like how smooth it feels. Okay, yeah, yeah. That, that was my kind of a lot of work, but uh, that was the biggest improvement. So I appreciate that you like it. So. Oh, yeah, I, I definitely love that. Like, it, it's, it's wonderful. Also, I removed the lines, so it's more like an open, like, world kind of feel. Uh, you can track oh, oh, the yeah. map, and especially at the end of the map, it bounces back if you, if you track it too far. Uh, but you see the wooden edge, so it feels like a board game, you know, like a tabletop game? Yeah. I, I like that feel. It solves the issue of that I had with, like, different size of maps and, like, the boundaries that people saw, like, black... I don't know if you remember a few maps that had, like, black edges. Yeah, I, I did notice far. that. Yeah, so now you see it's, it's fixed, right? There are no deck edges, um, you can scroll around so you can actually explore while before you actually stop walking. So it's more like at a lower pace, you know, like relaxing, just like, oh, yeah. I'm looking around a bit and oh, I'm enjoying the environment a bit more um, oh. before you uh, take a step. So. Yeah, uh, it's definitely very nice. I mean, it was very nice starting out as well, but wow. I, I don't even remember when, I didn't see what the, the day was that I posted the first video, but since then, it's definitely, it's come even further. Sometimes I don't even realize myself that um, how much progress I make every week, that people have to remind me like how much I do every week. So looking at it, the first video was posted six months ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, which it doesn't seem like that long ago, but looking at the, I guess the whole setup on it, like my, even my setup alone has changed drastically in those six months because of, I, I guess I've been cracking down on it a lot, but so from my understanding, you are completely solo developing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So how's that going? Um, it's kind of challenging. 
um, because you, I, I figured that my brain works differently because I, somehow like everything feels connected so I can relate a lot of stuff and everything that I see the whole game as like I call it like helicopter view I don't know if you're familiar with the term but more like a, a, a total overview I think I know what you mean uh, I don't think I've heard it as helicopter, but I think I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, you're, pretty, it's you're, you're watching it from a different perspective, like you're you're in the the back side of things. Uh, yeah, more like top down view, right? And I look down yeah. on the earth and like see the whole picture. Uh, okay, yeah, I've, yeah, yeah. I've made an entire roadmap because I thought like if I know before, I'm just gonna plan out the story. Um, even if the story is not there, I try to tell the story in technical. Uh, how do you say this? Technical outlines. I, maybe I can show you something that gives a better... I don't know, do you have the time? I don't know uh, how long you have for... I, th I think I can... I think I can do the okay. minute. Yeah, this is actually the level... Because I don't... This is not just everything. This is like the roadmap of the levels. Where we... Okay. Um, because sometimes the players ask like, Oh, what's going to be next? What's going to be next? Or like, they ask... Huh? Why is this area open before that one? And didn't actually see it, right? This is more like my roadmap. So they know, like I know that this area, people ask like when it's gonna open up. This 4150 area is gonna open up way later in the game. Yeah. Right now we are up to level 40. So that means like this area, this area. I still need to make a lot of maps in this area. I've, I've got to ask, because I don't remember the the world map. Did, did it get bigger since six months ago? No, just more maps. Just more maps. Okay, uh, I, I, did, I, did, I did make changes. Uh, like here you see, this is old, but on the new map there's like a, a passage. Mm -hmm. uh, I made the area of the Red Desert bigger. Um, I mean, it, it's also kind of development, right? That I miss things in the story or the story writer. Because I do have, like, I work with freelancers. Um, I'm not an actual artist myself. Oh, so I'm not I, either. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I think of everything and outline everything. And then um, also the community. I have great support from the community. Yeah, that's another thing I wanted to bring up. Uh, when I first played it, I did th there was maybe only a handful of players in the game. And then playing it right now, I see that you have a lot yeah. more players in here since the last time. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it increased a lot. And um, I'm also, uh, what I learned, um, what I actually like to do is more engaging with, mm -hmm. with the community. Because in the beginning, it was in my head. And people are always asking, like, if you don't share, people don't feel you're working on it. So I worked a lot, but it was more in an introvert way, right? Like, I'm just developing and um, not really showing my face. And it's, it's, it feels different from the player perspective, because they, right. they want to actually know you. Like, who is the developer? They actually ask for me a lot. And I, that's why I also started streaming on Twitch. I thought, like, how can I make this more engaging? I started doing with my uh, staff, um, because I do have, like, people helping me, the staff. So they help uh, um, organizing things as someone yeah. also catching all the bugs coming in and then uh, removing duplicates and uh, listing everything so when I try to do like a day of bug fixing I can just open the list and see like okay this is like urgent this is medium this is low and I can just um, yeah dive into work instead of first organizing everything so that's really really helpful uh, people recently helped me engaging on social media more and um, we see that it really helps that people uh, are around more, the chat is more active, the discord uh, maybe also oh, yeah. is way more active. I started doing like more polls, uh, it's also interesting to know uh, player opinions that they actually can tell like what they like or don't like and if there's Let's say there's a poll that is um, like there's like an even like something that I feel like needs to be debated because it's not like an obvious choice. So let's say there's A and B and it's like 90% B, then it's obviously gonna be B. Right. But the, the community like, has a good say. Uh, yeah, and if I if I don't agree or like I feel I miss something or I don't understand their choice, I'm open. That's why I uh, want to bring it. To then I bring it to Twitch. So then I'm gonna actually debate it live with players and ask to join so we can actually debate that question or like the, 
the stuff that they want to share with me or talk about. Same as a new right. upcoming expeditions batch. It's very interesting. It's the first actual more like group content where people can invite four other people on their ship. So they have to build their own ship. That's really awesome. So you have to craft stuff. I was say that that's I don't Yeah. That's very so, recent, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still working on it. It's like, uh, it's not finished, but I also already brought the people into the idea, and so, I felt... Oh, sorry, yeah. Uh, I, I was going to say, so with these features that you're testing, right, uh, it, do you have a second server that you test these in, or...? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, the development server. So I have my live server and development server. And okay. when the, I finished the batch, I ask people uh, from staff to join first. Then we do a quick uh, test run. Then I polish it or bug fixing like everything that we found. And then I invite more like a bigger portion of the community. And um, then they will catch some stuff or have some feedback like, oh, maybe the UI should change or I expected it to work like this. You know, like just getting uh, overall feedback okay. and then when it's polished live and most of the times I are still like polishing it when it's on the live right it's not like that i take months to test it but the active the live community is more active and those if, if it's tested in live you get way faster the actual feedback that's right. uh, my experience so i try to get rid of as much like game breaking bugs and annoying bugs that's definitely a good way to go about it and i'm I, i've started up a 5m server like on gta and i found that a lot of my time is spent towards bug fixing <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah bug fixing is a, is a big thing yeah, yeah. especially as a solo developer Yes. It's very hard to like, yeah, everything is already, sometimes people expect that you literally know literally everything of the game. Yes. But a lot of the times I need to dive back into my code like, oh, how did I do it exactly? So that's um, kind of a challenge. So sometimes I'm willing to look back in the code if people have questions. Because then I'm wondering myself like, oh yeah, how did I do it again? And then it's more like a refreshing moment for myself as well. And at that moment, I also rethink the same process to think, is this still what I want today with the new mechanics or does it still fit in what I have built? Yeah. Sometimes I, I want to rework something that I that people let me check something, and then I feel like, okay, this is kind of a little bit outdated, and then I just start rewriting it. Um, and if I feel there's a big change, I actually ask the community, um, because recently, for example, we had strong boxes, and that was basically a drop of a chest that you had to open with keys. And it was okay. based on rarity. You know the rarity, right? Magic, uh, rare, epic, um, and yeah. so on. Yeah. So there were like seven different rarities per tier. So there was like seven times, right now we are in tier six. Uh, and in the end, I will go to tier 12. So there's a lot more to come. But then you can do the math. That's a lot of different boxes. And if people stash them up, it takes a lot of space. Can we not just make, well, because people always say like, oh, inventory management, it's, it's difficult, it's hard. Uh, we need to make too many choices. They are like, okay, now let's help them out a bit. Well, what I did was replace the actual uh, rarities, just make it one box per tier. So there's now there's not like a magic copper swan box and a rare one, it's just copper swan Okay, box. Just I got you. One, but I put in like little more uh, rewarding stuff and more randomness, like RNG and items. So all the rarities can drop from that single box. It saves up a lot of space. It brings also a little bit more like the gambling feel, like ooh, uh, the excitement of what do I get from the chest. And I think that's more exciting and also saves a lot of space. And that's before I did that, I actually discussed with the community, like, should I, change it do you like to have more space and a more wider variation in the chest but that's actually how i uh, try to do to go with big changes to actually ask how the community feels about them because sometimes they have a better idea they have like a slight right. different change 
and then I think about it like, oh yeah, that's actually even better than what I came up with myself. Yeah, because that's something that I've always seen is is typically the player knows what the player wants. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I definitely that, that's probably a very big appreciation part for most games and their developers. Like the fact that you're taking their advice first of all is a major thing because a lot of developers don't do that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy to think about. I kind of understand because sometimes, like, I don't always agree because some people just want everything for free and just right. A lot of people uh, want stuff handed to them. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so, but then it removes the game out. Right. What what not everyone understands is the easier something is to get, the less value it will have. Yes. So if the if the if the players want something valuable so they can trade it and become like rich, right? That's what players want. They want to become powerful and rich in a game. But therefore you need like the economy system, right? You need something the the ask and uh, the demand and the offer. So if, if it takes a long time to get something and it's good it's valuable. If you hand it out like in a bakery, like cookies and bread, like it's just like almost for free, then they don't have anything to chase for. They don't have anything valuable because everyone has it when it's exactly. One day. And that's something like the that you have to as a developer you have to separate. Actually like okay, the need, like if they want something, it can also be good to keep it like that. So you have to actually decide like what is something that I can give to them and what is something that I just have to stay as is and don't, uh, yeah it's, right. it, it's a big challenge to uh, to balance it out and because the game needs to be fun I recently discovered that the guilds building guilds was a bit too tedious and too bit ground grindy so I asked the community do you want me to reduce the required resources by 25%, by 50%, or 75%. And everyone, actually, most people were like 50% to even 75%. Oh, wow. That... So, yeah, because, um, and I'm probably, I, I'm gonna do the 75%. And there's a reason, because I thought about it, right? Is it something that they just want to make it easy, or is it actually too tedious and that the fun is a little bit off? And right. I thought the last would apply that, um, the um, pure amounts were a little bit too high and in the beginning the guilds were actually the biggest time consuming element in the game really? but now we have uh, we will have the expeditions where you need to build a boat my future plans are even that players can build their own house and rooms and uh, that crafting is also needed for there so that would be awesome to see uh, yeah so if, if guilds are taking up like almost all day for people to build on, what do they have, uh, how much time do they have left for the other stuff? Like, oh, um, I made a mistake. Uh, so, uh, I'm gonna uh, hold that thought. How should I uh, take care of this situation? I, I believe I'm sharing my screen. So, I'm in over my head here with uh, one of the arcane infused eye, watch, or eye warriors. And I'm actually also curious, what inspired your characters? It's like, I'm, I'm always been a, like, you mean the actual characters themselves, or do you mean the enemies? I, I guess both. It's like, I've always been a fan of the medieval fantasy. Um, like, I played a lot of Diablo, so I, I think it's like, it's just uh, like Lord of the Wings. It's all the, the medieval fantasy related stuff. <laughs> you died there. Yep. <laughs> I was it's, thinking the uh, health potion might have gave me another second, but uh, yeah, he, yeah, he's a, no, he's a bit high level. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's and he's two stars, so he has like extra stuff. Now you're back at the fountain. Yeah, you got a cheap. But it's it, it. I always liked the medieval fantasy team. Um, like I, I watched the, the World of Warcraft movie, uh, Lord of the Rings. That a lot, a lot of those. Oh, I love Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that's, that's just amazing, right? So that fantasy, that magical uh, world, that's just was just in my hand. And I wanted to share with the world. So that's why I started creating things. Because I literally, I never had like a school in, in, in big development. I only had like base HTML. And that was it. I never had PHP, MySQL. So I, I had to learn everything myself. But I was so focused on getting to create the world that's inside my head, my fantasy. I just wanted that. I, I always looked up to Lord of the Rings and Diablo 2. Like, I was like, whoa, what if one day I could make all of that combined into one, just my own 
world, my own game that I can share with the world. That's that was that, actually, that's a good way to look at it. Yeah, and that's what I really try to do, and that's why I'm so passionate about it because it's my it's not something I see as my business. It's my passion. It's my baby. It's my child. It's something that you create and and just introduce to the world, right? So players can actually experience the world that was once inside my head. Of course, it's like right. of course it's changed and a little bit adapted to the players' feedback and everything. But m most of it is just still like the vision I have in mind. Right, and, and it definitely shows. I, I want to say that like from the art style to how it's been playing out, it, it there's definitely work put behind it. Like hello, it, hours, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it it shows. It doesn't feel like just a random indie game that's out there. Yeah, thanks, thanks. I am running a bit short, so I'm gonna have to cut it soon. Uh, what was your biggest setback in the in Noroff so far? My biggest setback? Yes. Um, I have to think about that one. I think it's, um, there was like a small, like, at first there were like, um, how do I say this? When we had the, the old version, like the tile movement and everything feel, felt like clunky. I did some advertising and people left a lot because they didn't like the clunky movement and it was just, it didn't feel finished. So I really felt stuck. Like, what do I miss? What did I do wrong? Like, why why can I not convince people to stay in my creative world? Like, that was like a big question. And for me, it felt like a setback because I saw like, if you, if you don't grow, you also go back. Right, right that's more like it slowly feels right. like the game is dying so i was like searching like yeah what did i do wrong what, what's going on why the, of course we had a, a certain player base that was actually till today like always every day they came online but not enough new people right it was and, hard to get people to stay yeah so i stopped advertising because i'm like ah, not, i'm not gonna throw away money and because like, uh, i put it in a lot of my own money as well uh, and of course, I, I also get donations, um, but I really want to think about like, what's more important is also the game development. But if you have no income, like how... Yeah, it's kind of hard to keep it... up with everything if you yeah. can't afford to do it. I, I definitely yeah, understand that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's a bit like a struggle. And that felt like a setback. You know? It felt like something uh, that I almost uh, failed that... Um, it was hard to just find the the, the, the trick, you know, the, the last piece of the puzzle that was just like missing. And then one day I just I just got it. I thought like I have to finish the patch. Like it's smooth walking. I have to recheck the whole tutorial thing. I have to even make it more user friendly. I have to redesign the interface because the whole interface also changed. And yeah, I, I noticed that. It's actually yeah. a lot smoother too. I, I didn't yeah, realize exactly. like... Uh, I mean, I, I skimmed through the first video I did to kind of uh, recollect, because this was six months ago, and my memory is yeah. awful as it is. And jumping into it, I didn't even think of the user interface at all until you just mentioned it, and then I'm like, oh yeah, that that that's very different from when I when I first played it. And yeah, even... I, I like that. I actually I really like how it is a lot. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, and that's like the, the whole self learning. Uh, aspect of the game of game design. I actually did a lot of YouTube videos. On. I didn't do the YouTube videos, but I watched a lot of YouTube videos about game design and about interface uh, specific like game mechanics and, and actually looking for what could I, what else could I improve? Like I wanted to actually make everything as smooth as possible. And I, I still have like my list of, of what I have to do is still like insanely long. It, it's a never ending story. And I, I also like that about it. That is something that's never finished because your passion keeps going on. You always have new stuff, new ideas, you can always expand, improve things. Um, so yeah, that's... Um, that was the moment that right now we see a lot of, like you already know, you also noticed that there's a lot more active players. Oh yeah, there uh, definitely is. Yeah, the game is growing. 
Discord, everything is more active, the game chat, the game itself, you see people walk, walking around. Also what I really like, as you see right now on your screen, I yes. coded the uh, villagers that are the level 1, like Archibald and uh, William. Those yeah. have their own character. I, I actually thought about what kind of villagers would fit in this city. So if you go to another city, uh, like in the Undead City, it's more like zombies. In the Bundavik, that's like more like a pirate, like a, a robbery uh, city. So they're uh, more, they, they match the city city's theme more. Yes, yeah, exactly. And also, even the emojis, if you communicate them by popping an emoji, oh, yeah, they seen will, that. yeah, they will actually talk to you if they are close. So if you walk close really? to him, yeah, you can just pop one, and yeah, he, you see, huh. he's blushing from your love, so... <laughs> So you can actually like try and uh, communicate and uh, every villager in every city has their own set of emojis. Like the pirates will actually show a sword that they want to fight you or they show a coin that you, they want your money. Uh, so it's kind of like, it was a really fun project to do that people have more engaging with the world because I was thinking, I don't have a 3D game, like it's not live, like it's not World of Warcraft level, but right. I had to think like how could I make it interesting that everything with the world is more enticed and more connected, that the world is alive. So I had to fit in the villagers in the right biome that it feels logically. I don't put a zombie in, in a water animal, right? Or like it, it needs to feel match if it's warm and uh, uh, hot. Then there's other different uh, uh, people living there that are adjusted to the biome with different skin tones and everything is just thought through of that it fits the biome right in in, a, in the most natural way and that's what I really liked about the project uh, to just think of the villagers themselves and what kind of emojis they would have so uh, yeah I don't have a 3D environment it's 100% web based. The, 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 the big, biggest compliment that I got so far is also that people say that they actually expect it to be exactly like the triple A uh, games. Yeah, I can't, I don't, I don't understand where that mindset comes from. Like, they're going, I think that a lot of players, I don't want this to sound offensive to anybody, but like, uh, they're, they're spoiled. <laughs> no, I, I get it, of course. Like, it's they, like, I mean, I guess I understand you're going into a game, you're expecting the game to play well, right? But mm -hmm. to expect it to play like it was a three million dollar budget or something. I wish. <laughs> uh, yeah, like I, I couldn't imagine where it would be if if you had that going for for Noroth. Like, yeah. W would you keep it a two dimensional top down, or would you go to a more three dimensional World of Warcraft? I don't know. It to be honest, I would like the 2D aspect. Even if I would have the budget, I would actually hire more like an actual, like an experienced art team about environmental designs and like they have more knowledge because, um, yeah, I like to make more polish things to make it even like the next level. But I don't know if I wanted to make it 3D. I really like the 2D aspect. And especially now it's like in the browser, it's 100% web based. People, it's basically, just a website because right it's, it's very accessible too like on your phone and like mm -hmm. quite literally any device that has an internet browser you can play this yeah. on like that, had, that's something you don't see often either yeah and that, that's things i i really challenge like uh some people think like okay web development like web development is is uh, meant to build websites but I literally try to translate mechanics and techniques from web use into game design. Like, how can I translate those things into game design? It's or working. <laughs> yeah, like uh, like the animations, like CSS uh, animations for uh, combat, um, like the walking. Um, yeah, there's a lot of techniques that actually are used for web development and that I used to make it a game. I think that's one of the, also one of the most challenging and interesting parts of, yeah, this particular way of, of designing the game. I even have people uh, playing on Xbox. They just opened the browser really? on Xbox. Really? Yeah. They were saying like, oh, I play with a controller. I'm like, uh, uh, sorry, do you do what? <laughs> uh, one guy even installed just a controller on his, uh, on his computer and then uh, key bound, uh, did some key binds. Huh. So yeah, it's kind of that's, that's it, yeah, yeah, that's very interesting. I, I mean, I was just thinking to myself like, uh, 
none of the arrow keys are WASD you don't move around with in the game, right? Uh, the map moves right now, yeah. Yeah, so for them to use a controller, I, I'm very curious how that works. I might have to try that. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's like you move around with the cursor. Um, it, it actually, they, they actually developed it as a mouse, I guess, that they programmed it to be like a mouse. But I think it was also back in the day that they used it when you could move per tile. And right now, because the whole system changed, that you can track the map around and you click on one spot. And I actually have no answer how they would do it right now with a new patch. I, I just want to say that I'm always trying to find ways to improve the user experience and accessibility. Uh, I also did some study in uh, color blindness and yeah, things to improve contrast. Uh, I spoke to people that have a hard time seeing things on screen. I had even a guy that they have some kind of motion sickness. If, if something moves on the back and it's that they feel like getting dizzy, so it was kind of interesting to talk to them because I never thought about it. It's like something new, like you, you, if you don't have it yourself, it's not the first thing you think of. But then right. you, you, you experience that your players, also everyone is different, everyone has their own uh, things going on. And actually I was glad that they stepped up to me and said like, can you change this? And then I'm like, yeah, why? like? isn't it working and said yeah it's working but and then they actually took the time to explain it and I took the time to ask more for more details like how how do you experience it what what does it feel like how can I improve my game to make it more user friendly for you and that was also a really interesting project that I talked to people with those kind of um, yeah, disabilities if I maybe call it like that yeah, um, I would say I would so have yeah. never thought of uh, thought of that like that. It's yeah. interesting how that plays out. Like quite literally, uh, you're you making something here that brings anybody from around the world, quite literally anybody, into one area. Yep, that's my goal. It's uh, also uh, that's why I try to keep away from 3D to make it accessible even for people with slow internet that they can still be able to play a great game without needing an expensive graphics card and an expensive PC. Right. It, yeah, that that's definitely a big thing I think that's important as well because it seems like you, most games nowadays, you got to have something that can run it, you know? And, like a big machine, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, especially anything new that's coming out, it seems. I'm going to have to leave you off here, but that was awesome. Uh, nice talking to you, and it's actually nice meeting you. I'm surprised that we haven't actually talked already. <laughs> yeah, I, that's why you... you uh... You suggested it, and I was like, whoa, that sounds amazing that we actually uh, just meet. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great. I really appreciate it. I really yeah. do. <laughs> so, so this video, from the audience perspective, is going to be kind of back and forth between the, the game and talking to you. And mm -hmm. then the next episode I'll do, uh, I'm probably going to make it strictly gameplay. Mm -hmm. So that way I can dive more into it, because... Right now, I'm trying to get more familiar with it, so a lot of this is me getting familiar with it again, and then seeing the changes, and then talking to you. So, but yeah, that was that was nice. You definitely have an awesome game going for you. Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> uh, I love seeing the changes. I do have one suggestion. I would absolutely love if you could use the scroll wheel to zoom in or zoom out. Yeah. Okay. I, I can. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I I tried to code it. But there's one issue I, I have to look into to solve it because, okay, I try to really explain it quickly that you have like an idea what, what the issue is. Right now it's like, uh, because it's rock based, there are like elements and the map is like this. And if you do it, like push it to there, if you zoom in, um, it's like, it's not zooming in on the center of your mouse. It's zooming just, oh, really? it, makes the, it makes it the whole view bigger and smaller so it's like you feel like you zoom in in the wrong direction so everything is like set off the boundaries are uh, uh, set off so it, it, it went like to be a little bit messy and not how i want it to be it didn't feel smooth so i thought like okay i have to think about it later but i really wanted to have it in like to to have a little zoom 
that you actually could zoom out, like even if it's a little bit out and a little bit in, because if it's too much, you get like the small tiny map that would be. Like, oh yeah, you wouldn't want that. <laughs> <laughs> and too much in the, the the graphics would be blurry, right? I, I didn't make it for like, super high zoom in quality. I actually made it just the right size, so the download is also reduced to a minimum. I don't want right. to have like too big files. So that was a lot to uh, to think about. So yeah, I um, I get your suggestion. There are only uh, already a few others that asked uh, or suggested it, but uh, I didn't find the actual solution that I want to go with yet. But, uh, okay, it's on my list. <laughs> that's awesome, but that's really the only suggestion I have right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I get back into the game to record another session, because I, I definitely want to spend a lot of time playing it so I can get back used to it even more, see what more, because even in the first one, I didn't actually, I don't think I touched on everything I could be doing. So I definitely no, want to... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to go do that, and then I'll probably have a, a suggestion for you then, if I see any. Uh, definitely a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure talking to you. Yeah. Is there see, anything man. that you would like to say to the audience? Uh, ooh, that's <laughs> a tough one. Um, yeah, I, uh, I hope the, uh, I hope you guys want to experience my world and see what it has to offer. And uh, always feel free to uh, to come by and talk to me. I'm uh, available on Discord and Twitch, and so. Uh, which I'll leave the links to those down below. You're invited. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's all. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> all right.